Hello, welcome to Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. I'm Nikki Eisenhower, your host, life coach, and psychotherapist. And on today's episode, I'm discussing emotional blackmail and the ego's drug of choice. Now, I ask for grace in this episode because I'm going to name some things that are a little scary for me to name. And if you are reactive as a human being, as we can be as we go through our healing, especially if we have nervous systems that can get triggered and react instead of knowing how to respond. So this episode might be hard for you if you are in a stage in life, if you are in a season where you are reactive. And you may be more reactive if you have some PTSD going on, if your nervous system reacts. What we're looking for in healing is to mindfully understand, okay, my body and my mind can react. They can pull back hard and fast. What we want to cultivate is this idea of responding instead of reacting. So if you hear some things about me that make you reactive in this episode, I encourage you to squeeze the therapeutic value out of it that you need to be able to sit there, work through that feeling and see if you can come up with a response that really serves you. Often when we have traumatic childhoods, we slip into a pattern of self-sabotage. So pay attention to what you feel as you move through this episode and find the difference between responding and reacting. This is something that can help us in all of life. And that will serve your higher self more than any kind of fear or any kind of nervous system reaction. That reaction comes from the wounded righteousness of our ego or our fear that loves righteousness. I really want to explain my lane before I move on to remind listeners that have been with me a while where I'm coming from and to let newer listeners who haven't been along for my ride get a sense of, of what I'm really doing on this microphone and what my calling is on this planet. I have an undergraduate degree in psychology and a master's degree in community counseling. I've been a full-time professional counselor for 15 years. I'm grateful that y'all tell me I look young a lot, but I have been in this mental health game for 15 full-time years. My specialties began in addiction, grief and loss, and trauma. And over the years, I realized that I was a highly sensitive person, as were many of my clients. And that helped me develop my HSP specialty. I've worked in hospitals in Louisiana and Texas on psych units. I've worked in high schools running support groups for adolescents in poverty. I've mentored therapists on how to run groups with adolescents effectively. And I've led support groups for homeless adolescents living in shelters. My career in trauma paralleled much of my personal life. I am born and raised in New Orleans, and I returned to New Orleans the year that Katrina hit. I started my career, I was a baby counselor to help bring New Orleans back after Katrina. I was mentored by therapists who had stayed for the storm and were traumatized. I'm a childhood sexual abuse survivor, survivor of the abandonment of my biological father, and an adoptive father was my abuser. I put him in prison in my early 20s and I am currently in my 40s. My trauma work, personally and professionally, has had me working with dynamics of manipulation, of control, and I have worked my entire career and my personal life to learn what it is to reclaim our lives after trauma, after chaotic childhoods, after inadequate parenting, or abusive and neglectful parenting. I have worked since the beginning of my career with people who have extracted themselves from cult situations and cult-like dynamics. These experiences and my studies 
have made me an expert in dynamics like codependency, deprogramming, claiming personal power, regulating nervous system, understand our emotional body as much as our physical bodies through my yoga training. I am also a trained yoga teacher and had my own small studio for a few years. So in my early counseling training and education, I was taught how to sit across from people who would challenge my own beliefs, challenge what I even thought was right or good, wrong or bad. I was taught directly that it was my job morally and ethically as a counselor to hold space for those with differences, with absolute unconditional positive regard. So I learned to suspend judgment. I learned how to not put my beliefs or my experience onto others. And this taught me how to be a freer person, a happier person, a person who allows others their messy humanity. And if we get what we give, then this also taught me how to allow myself my own messy humanity. I have become an expert in emotional blackmail and manipulation. This is my lane. It's a lane I didn't consciously intend my first year of college, even my second or third year of college. My career has unfolded to guide me, to lead me as I have found more of myself as a human being. Some of my clients over the years, not knowing that other people have said this to me, have spontaneously called me a therapy ninja because I'm really good at cutting through the bullshit, cutting through the distractions, the distortions, the fluff to get to the core of what's going on with the human condition. I can laser in on what needs attention and what can wait. I've been sitting back and doing a lot of observing in the past few years. I'm concerned for you and everyone's mental health. I have helped many people deprogram after leaving cults and dysfunctional relationships. And I am seeing these dynamics more and more and more and more in use in media and social media. I teach boundaries because we can learn to keep the sanity in and the crazy out. I practice and guide inner child work to reparent and mature ourselves. And that makes it possible to live through this hard-earned wisdom that we're all earning every single day. The strategies that I use, the things that I get on this microphone and talk about, are all with the intention to bring more peace and more fulfillment, more personal understanding, and more understanding of how we relate to one another. There is more peace available to us than depression or resentment or fear or victim mentality can imagine. That's what I'm here to offer. And in this episode, I really need some courage because I've been having something weighing on my heart energetically. And then recently, what was sort of slightly weighing on my heart seemed to jump on my heart like a giant hippo. And after some clients and Chris brought my attention to it, I went and listened to Biden's recent speech. Now, to be honest with you, I, I sort of resent that mental health and politics are overlapping so much. I did not ever want that to be a part of what I share with you, a part of the show. I would like boundaries around that. But in the messiness of this modern time, it's weighing on me to address this. So even though those are the boundaries that I want, I don't think those are the boundaries that really apply for the situation that we're in. And that's what's been bothering my heart. So I hope that by showing you my vulnerability here, it will help you show yours in your own life when and where it counts and by me showing you, I hope that you find some permission within yourself to get whatever is heavy off your own heart, off your own mind. We don't have to carry around that which is heavy. My lane is not COVID science or to tell you what to do or what to think. In my opinion, anyone coming out strongly telling you what to do and what to think is a major red flag. But it is my lane to confront what's illogical what are manipulative cognitions to confront cognitive dissonance 
And as we say in yoga, to remove the veils of distortion, to gain clarity as we grow, as we evolve, so that we can lean in to healthily loving ourselves and each other, healthily respecting ourselves and each other. A newer definition of codependency is lack of self-love. Codependent people tend to put the needs of others above their own to their own detriment. In codependency recovery, we work on giving ourselves permission to be central to our own lives. I often kind of laughingly say, if I can't be ish about myself, who the hell is supposed to be ish about me? The current narratives of division and pressure around all things, but specifically COVID for this episode, are emotional blackmail and extremely codependent and develop victim-savior complexes. If you're interested in knowing more about codependency that I'm not going to get into in this episode, come find the Patreon live stream that we did a few months ago on codependency. And just like a good, safe, loving parent must be strong enough to say no and to push against what the popular kids are doing and allow a child to be angry with them, Healers and life guides like me must be willing to invite such anger if we are to stand in our integrity as healers, as helpers, as guides. I'm done sitting back and observing, and I'm ready. COVID is not an excuse to emotionally blackmail. No amount of fear makes shame as motivation okay. We have a saying You've probably heard it before, that the truth hurts. You ever thought about that? Isn't that weird? Why would the truth hurt us? Why wouldn't we just delight in truth being dropped in our laps? A lot of us who listen to this show identify as truth speakers. Why on earth would the truth hurt us? As human beings, we are creatures whose egos have a drug of choice. And the ego's drug of choice is being right. So our egos like to get on a train track, so to speak, and like to keep going in the same direction once they've decided what train track they're going to be on. And in life, what is inevitable is that new information comes in. New information that often suggests getting off of that train track. And instead of our egos melting into openness or possibility or thoughtfulness about this possibility, the ego gets prickly. The ego doesn't like that. The ego doesn't want new information that might make it have to do a thing that wasn't what it had pre-decided it was going to do. The ego does not want to have the feeling of feeling wrong. If you're an avid listener of the show, you've heard me talk about black or white, all or nothing thinking a lot. This is what the ego loves, making itself right and making whatever the other is wrong. It wants rightness like a drug. And that train of thought continuing to be on that track emboldens the ego to continue to get faster. What happens to a train that's on a track? It builds momentum and it gets harder and harder and harder to stop or slow or change with that momentum behind it. The ego will come up with every possible story and it will sound very wise while it does so about why it's right. That's another hit of righteousness for the ego system. And why it doesn't need to consider this new information. This is dangerous to the human condition on the individual level for sure. It makes healing and growth work and self-development take longer, frankly. Add the power of social media and then add the power of mass media pulling our human strings constantly. And this has the potential to create division like we have not seen before in the human experience. And that division, in my opinion, because there can be no study about this, we're in it, it's happening now. My opinion from my 15 years of experience, this division 
will lead to mental illness like we have not yet seen. So as human beings with this human condition, we don't accept new information that changes our minds readily or easily. Something to consider is that new information often isn't asking for you to believe it's opposite. That's what the ego likes to say because it likes to swing the pendulum from one side to the other, right or wrong, all or nothing. And that's not where we live. Very few things in life are all or nothing. New information asks us to open. We don't have to open wide but we can open an inch or two. We can scooch open, scooch over an inch or two and consider. We can always back up. We can always get back on a train track. New information is often asking us to just tweak what we formerly thought based on the information that we gathered at the time, based on the information we were exposed to, based on our own knowledge of the subject, based on our own histories and experience, and based on our own intuition at the time. As we move through, our experience evolves and changes. New knowledge can come to light, and our intuition may shift as possibilities are shifting. Less healthy influences may be peer pressure, what the popular crowd is doing, fear that can cloud our best thinking, Because when we're triggered, we don't have our best thinking. And that is by design so that we can react and fight for our lives or run for our lives without stopping and thinking, hmm, what's going on right now? What shall I do? So we are made as human beings with this system that when we're in fear to defend ourselves, triggers us not to think to help ourselves out physically. But when we face making a thoughtful decision that's not about protecting ourselves from a physical attack in the moment, that system can backfire because that fear response blocks our best thinking. So those of us who have not meditated, who have not learned how to calm our bodies, and that's not a head learning. You can't read enough books to do that. That's enough time, patience, and practice on the planet teaching this human nervous system how to be calm if you come from a chaotic childhood. But if you haven't done that, if there just hasn't been enough time, enough space for you to have integrated that work yet, that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means that's the process and that's where you are. But if that's where you are, you've got to know in my opinion, to be able to take care of yourself right now with all that's going on, that you may react and shut down to new information that may not serve you. This new information can sting the ego because the dysfunctional ego sees these things in this black or white, all or nothingness. So knowing this, we can learn to be more thoughtful, slow down internally, So that we can learn to be responsive instead of reactive. When we know this information, we can understand, okay, that's the first sting of my ego. Didn't like hearing that. But I can ride that wave of sting until that sting putters itself out. And my system can hear this new information. And then I can consider my choices, consider what's right for me, consider if I need to stay on that same train track I've been on, or if it's time for some adjustment. Now in real life with a real train, pretty impossible task to expect to pick up a train track and move it over a couple inches can't really do that in the physical sense of the train and the steel track. But I'm here to tell you that emotionally, we can do that. What would be so hard in the physical realm can happen in the emotional and mental realms if we invite this notion. Because like magic, just by thinking, we can move that track over a few inches. Because most of the time we're just tweaking what we believed and then what we might do with that belief from that new information. This is why the truth can hurt us. 
And the more that I've embraced this concept in my life and practice not allowing that sting to take over and drive my present moment, the more grounded, the more peaceful, the more calm, and the more proud, yes, proud of myself. Because I don't know about you, but the times in my life historically that I became triggered and acted from the fight or the flight when it wasn't about my physical safety in the moment, I became reactive. And I might have felt a powerful sense of unloading or walking out or telling someone off or getting rageful or just shutting down and leaving people or staying and internally dismissing, demeaning or dehumanizing the person in front of me. But then when the system comes back to normal, when that fight or flight or freeze response has subsided, I was filled with regret, shame, confusion, emotional exhaustion, physical exhaustion, often embarrassment, questioning, confused about my character and who I was in the world. What a process to put myself through. And learning to be responsive instead of reactive in such moments takes all that away or at least starts to take some of that away and starts to give us the experience of, oh, wow, I responded and that was better. That didn't make as much of a mess for me to clean up. That takes way less of my energy, actually, to start to show ourselves, ooh, this could really work for our lives. Then we get momentum learning how to respond instead of the momentum of reaction that feels so righteous to that ego. I continue to do work and have since the beginning of my career deprogramming people who have left cults. And believe it or not, leaving or trying to create some strong, healthy boundaries with a dysfunctional family is amazingly similar to leaving a cult. The low self-worth from a narcissistic upbringing and a right fighting family dynamic can make us not know how to be truly happy or peaceful. It makes us right fighters. There is a self-love deficiency that is codependency that tells us to put the well-being of others above our own. And I have been working to eradicate codependency and emotional blackmail, though I know those things will never go away for our human condition. Because shame and emotional blackmailing are just too effective at controlling people. Because of my work with emotional blackmail, codependency, and deprogramming, I have to acknowledge to you that I am for medical freedom. And I will advocate for my own and I will advocate for yours, even when you want something different than I do. It is most definitely textbook emotional blackmail and an encouraged codependency fueled by fear, legitimate fear, but fear of a disease, a legitimate disease. And I am here to say that it is legitimate to be cautious with new science and new healthcare. All of the potential choices and concerns between vaccination or not vaccinating are valid. And anything saying otherwise is in codependency and emotional blackmail. I have had a heavy heart about witnessing that America seems to be leaning into codependency and emotional blackmail. And I will not let what's happening derail my teaching. That speech triggered me. Now, I don't believe I've ever gotten on this mic and said that to you like that. And I know that it triggered many people with narcissistic family dynamics, too. To see my president using the very same emotional blackmail techniques when I outed the secret of childhood sexual abuse in my family was not a good vibe. I'm witnessing our American culture in its own dysfunctional family system. And our president behaves as the dad of this system. In my family of origin, when I outed the secret, the blame was not put on the man who violated me. The blame was put on me, directly and indirectly, for going to the police, for handling it in the light of day. 
I was blamed for making my family deal with this elephant in the room. I was made the bad guy. It is very hard to go against a group when you feel singular. I had a right to take care of myself as I saw fit back then, and I have a right to take care of myself now, as do you now and always. Be wary of anyone who tells you that their own logic, their own gut, their own risk tolerance, their own skepticism, their own willingness is a better measurer for you than your own, as they likely have an agenda, intentionally or mindlessly but an agenda to recruit you to their side. That's part of the human condition. It's part of what our egos do. Our egos want us to be right. And so they want to recruit people to the right side of thinking that the ego believes. If someone is recruiting you to a side, that in and of itself is divisive. If someone is using shame to encourage, that is coercion. There is no free choice within coercion forced by shame. Advocacy in America has taken a dark, codependent, emotionally blackmailing turn. And not just in America, beyond. Because we are the global influencers, right, wrong, or otherwise. Not just with COVID. With every issue on the table. What's become an acceptable and even celebrated norm is that we are no longer communicating with each other. On this issue of COVID are many, many human issues. We're sniping at each other. We're not inspiring each other. We're shaming each other. We're not enlightening each other. We're criticizing each other. It doesn't matter if we're talking about COVID, race, gender, and trans issues, the wealthy, politics, people with disabilities or limitations, body positivity, guns, immune systems, and health. Doesn't matter the plight. We are at each other about it. Nothing is ever good enough. And that is an old, old dysfunctional story that most of us are sadly familiar with. I am a systems theorist. I see how people relate to each other and the impact, the consequences and the implications of that relatability. We cannot allow emotional blackmail and call it healthy. These are the same dynamics so many of you are listening to me and following me to heal from your family of origin and you are seeing them on the national political table. So here's my message. Have you ever been in an abusive relationship with your family of origin or with a partner? Maybe a boss? Think of what they said and how you felt. I was married to a controlling man once when I was very young who would tell me that whatever he wanted was for my own good and was right. And if I had a different desire or opinion, I was made wrong, stupid, dense, too young to know any better, anything to dismiss my thoughts, my desire, or my intuition. We are living at a time where we must be careful about what's influencing us to make decisions about our bodies, our minds, and our hearts. Depression and suicide rates in our youth are out of control. This proves that what we're doing is not working. Our mental health is not getting better as a society. It's getting worse. And it is because of manipulation and emotional blackmail and codependency being encouraged in this current narrative. One of the gifts of my career that I don't think I've ever named on the show is that I get intimate insight into what's happening medically with every client that's ever worked with me. Just because it's a natural part of the process of sharing what's going on with your life with a healer. So I don't just have my own experiences having very significant side effects and weird side effects, consequences to almost every medical intervention that I have allowed in my life. 
So it's not just my own experience. I do have the medical experiences of thousands of clients under my belt. What has gone right and what has gone wrong and everything in between. Now, since I have specific training on how to be unbiased, I trust more of what I'm seeing and I'm seeing more of where other people are missing their own bias. I am someone who won't buy a first generation phone and will wait four years for the kinks to be worked out of a tech device. I sit and I observe before I jump into things. And by design, I do not almost ever jump on what's popular. I have been in a process of sitting back and witnessing. And I will continue to sit back and witness. And I will only make decisions for myself if my gut says it's right. If you hate me for this, if you dismiss me for this, I suggest that you are drinking the divisive Kool-Aid and that this will not bring you peace. And if I have helped you in any way till now and you're willing to throw me away, what does that do for you? I know that it will bring the ego its righteous supply, just like narcissists like their narcissistic supply. Because we feel right when we can make another person wrong. And I'm here to say human beings are so much more complicated than that. And I ask you to respect that within yourself and with all the other human beings on the planet. And when I mean all the other human beings, if I can do that for my father who molested me and see what is good in him, what he gave me that was good even though he violated me and hurt me, then I believe other people can do this around our differences in healthcare strategies. Big Pharma, now remember, I'm not commenting on the science, I'm commenting on the logic. Big Pharma does not have a good track record. Big Pharma has sprinkled opiates that were supposed to be non-addictive and perfectly safe all over this country, and we are three decades into an opiate epidemic from a drug that was supposed to be perfectly safe, and that is how it was peddled to doctors, and that is how it was distributed across our country. What's the collective death rate from that? Just a few days ago, the smoking cessation drug Chantix was pulled for cancer-causing carcinogens. I have spent countless hours sitting with people who feel so raw, they are crawling out of their skin, crying and sobbing and telling me the thoughts about killing themselves are there and they promise me they're not gonna do it, but those thoughts won't stop. And I believe them and I can feel that flood of fear and desperation. And that's from people tapering down to try to get off of SSRIs. And Big Pharma has handed out SSRIs like candy in this country. How many prescriptions have you received that didn't have a ridiculously long list of potential side effects? To say that we all must accept new science and put it into our bodies, that can be a perspective. But at the point that it is mandated, it becomes physically intrusive and abusive. In boundaries work, we learn that we cannot control other people. And to attempt to is a surefire way to create your own hell. Healing codependency is in large part about stopping over-functioning for others and learning to take care of yourself first, not to turn into a selfish asshole, but so that you are here for the long haul, so that you can really take care of other people and show up with vitality and endurance for this long life that we have. How do you think I have been able to release an episode every single week for years without ever missing? I'm pretty sure y'all can tell we just don't slap this together. We put this together with a whole lot of mindfulness and attention and effort from me and my team to edit and distribute and manage the social media. I can only do that on top of my full-time private practice by radically taking care of myself in mind, body, and spirit. Trust that it's absolutely reasonable to question new science. It is absolutely reasonable to question potential side effects, 
to question big pharma, its intentions, its efficacy, its ethics. And trusting your gut needs no defense. I'm going to say that again. If you have a strong gut sense either way to take the shot, to not take the shot, your gut needs absolutely no defending to anyone on this planet. That is the gift of being an adult. And those of you who grew up in dysfunctional homes, shake off that adult imposter syndrome where you need an authority figure to tell you what's good or what's right. Adulting is the permission to decide for yourself. You can ask other people, you can listen to their wisdom, but making a decision out of pressure is ill-advised. Making a decision because you came to terms with a yes or a no is well-advised. You do not now or ever need to defend your choices to anyone. This is what gives emotional blackmail power. If you want to feel as much freedom as is possible in this life, this is the gift of your adulthood, even when that feels like a hard, heavy thing. I want peace and ease for people. And what is being modeled in our world right now is not that. So I'm willing to say the hard things, even when it's hard for me, even when it scares me. And I know that you're facing in different ways, similar dynamics within your own life, within your own dynamics, within your own call to truth speak. When we get sick, it is because germs exist. And germs know that their purpose is to spread. And they do that despite our best efforts, because that is what they do. We can wish everyone health and wellness while we listen to our own guts and make our own decisions about our health care. Just like when we were in high school and middle school, it is wise to be a bit skeptical about what is very popular and to check in with yourself about your motives before acting. Are you acting in your own best interest? Are you acting with your own best wisdom? Are you acting because you're wanting to please other people? Are you acting to be accepted by a group? Are you acting out of fear? Are you okay with acting out of fear? As an expert who helps deprogram people who leave cults, I'm telling you that these dynamics online and in the media are brainwashing cult level techniques. To get people into cults, they use methods of isolation, mind control, love bombing and praising, giving into fear and control. And because of COVID, we are all, all of us, me too, we are living in circumstances, part COVID, part the speed at which information can be shared online, part continued stress levels for two years now, a certain amount of powerlessness and frustration. As highly sensitive people, Empathically, we do care for others, and we struggle daily to figure out the bounds and the balance of our own self-care versus our caring for others as we heal codependency. Nationally, a story has been created of victimization by the vaccine hesitant, and that is a victim mentality, pure and simple. That is part of the manipulation. That is part of the emotional blackmail. Fear level does not change this. Anytime we position ourselves as the victim of another, we are in our victim mentality. How does it feel to be there? How long do you want to be there? How long should anybody stay there? Is it ever good? These are the questions we grapple with. All of these dynamics make it easier than ever for all of us to be manipulated. We are all being manipulated, and I am here to help us, if you want this help from me, to learn to get past your anxiety to trust your intuitive gut as a life compass, to understand your own critical thinking, and to be able to flex that muscle as you're inundated with the opinions of others, and learn to be your own best advocate for yourself. For years, I have been teaching survivors that there are no white knights in our lives. 
There are no white knights that come down and save us. Not from having to work hard to earn a living. Not from having to do deep down work if we really want vulnerable and intimate relationships. And I don't believe in white knights and this narrative that it is anyone's job to save anyone else from anything ever. Don't take my word on it either. Look around at the people in your world. Who's doing peace well? Who's managing these stressors with more grace and joy? What's their logic like? Learn to take wisdom instead of drama from the people in our worlds. And our lives start to get better. Especially if you identify as an empath or suspect that you might be empathic. Be mindful. Are you absorbing drama or are you absorbing wisdom? Are you blocking drama or are you blocking wisdom? Life comes down to the choices that we make and how we show up for ourselves internally and externally. Shame isn't it. Manipulation isn't it. And if we get what we give, ooh, I'm concerned for the people that seem to believe that this shame is the right way to go. It was hard for me to watch the psychological dad of our country. That's what a president is, y'all, no matter how you slice it. Whether we chose him or we didn't, the president acts as the psychological father of our country. And using shame and emotional blackmail to control a population, that is what is happening. This is my lane. It is how cults work to recruit. What's the one collective thing we all know cults offer? What do they offer? All of them. Doesn't matter what they are. What do they offer? It's a message of come join us and we will save you. You'll die if you don't join us. And the poor souls who don't follow us just don't know any better. And ooh, they are going to get the wrath. I could plug that message into any cult. Any. Once in the cult, the shame is used to keep you in. And you always have a right to change, grow, leave, evolve, or reject. If not, we're being controlled. I support all of you in making personal decisions for your own health care. I support medical freedom now and always. If you've jabbed and decided that's right for you, awesome. Keep trusting your gut and your choice. If you haven't jabbed, awesome. Keep trusting your gut and your choice and I'll help you work through the United States and beyond collectively emotionally blackmailing you. Those of you jabbed and supporting choice, thank you for rising above the toxic narrative for us all. Stay strong, see the humanity in each other instead of the politics, and trust in all storms ending. Survivors who are overwhelmed or triggered, use your life to look back and realize every tough, crazy thing you have ever lived through made you stronger, and it taught you more about yourself and about life. You are stronger than you feel in any vulnerable moment. Hold on. If you keep listening and following me, I'll be leaning into compassion, gratitude, and respect for all beings as we celebrate differences. We are a vast human tribe of beautiful difference. And the solution is not sameness. We have to honor our differences as a human tribe. When handled respectfully, can do beautiful things for us. It can wear off our edges like we're sanding our edges off. We learn to allow instead of to fight. We learn to put our energy on what we can do better or what we can do to empower ourselves instead of pointing outward and wanting others to do something to make us feel better. We grow when we learn to celebrate our human diversity versus fight it. We grow when we learn to honor our human diversity instead of shame it. I don't care if you are vaccinated or not, but to benefit from my work moving forward, we have to be able to agree that what Biden and the administration are doing with full media support is emotional blackmail. Coercion is not consent, not when it comes to sex and not when it comes to medical treatment. Part of my work is to challenge logic that isn't logical 
always has been my work since the early days working with addiction. That's a big part of what counseling is, is confronting someone's cognitions and figuring out where did that cognition come from? Who influenced that? Was that a conscious choice to jump on that bandwagon or was that a subconscious choice to jump on that bandwagon? And we figure that out. I never expected emotional blackmail and codependent dynamics to become so fashionable or popular. It takes courage to speak your truth when it isn't the current popular narrative. I know it is taking courage for you to face issues inside of yourself every day. And then with people and how we relate. Even if you have a different perspective, I hope your wise man or wise woman self can meet me in this logic. If you cannot meet me in this logic, I still wish you well. If you're still with me after this long episode, thank you for holding space for me to get this all out. This has been one of the hardest episodes we have recorded. Thank you. For those of you who want to learn with me for the Boundaries course, it's coming up. It's going to be here in a blank, October 18th. You can use coupon code EARLYBIRD21 till the end of September, or you can still choose a payment plan. The Boundaries course is my favorite thing to do every year, and I cannot wait to meet this group. Light and love. Stay true to yourselves. I'm an emotional badass. You're an emotional badass. And together we are where Moxie meets Mindful. Light and love, and I will see you right here next time. Bye-bye. 